Greetings, this is m squared, and we're going to use calculator to approximate some radicals. So square roots, you see square roots, you see a cube root and a fourth root too. The square root's pretty straightforward. You're going to just put the square root button, which is the second function, and then the x squared key in this kind of calculator. And you put 245 down, and you press enter. You get 15.65, we'll round to the nearest second. I've already done that one. Sometimes you have a different kind of calculator, for example, this one. On this calculator, you have to put the 245 in first, and then hit the square root button, and you get the same thing. Now, for the cubed root, it gets a little more complicated. That's why I prefer this one. You do have a cubed root key down here if, it, if you have this model, the second function of the zero, but then I've been fooling around with this second function of this key, which says x, and then um, the little x index and then the radical sign and the y, and couldn't get it quite to work, so I'm going to use this other one, but this one's a little more challenging to use. So I am going to show you on this kind of calculator, same thing on the graphing calculator, you could, well I can show you that too. The graphing calculator is a little bit different. Here we go on this one. There's a little key right here on the caret. There's an X as an index, which means that we actually have to enter our index first, and then we hit that key. So then that little X right there, that means the 3, and then you say negative 163. And you get negative 5.46. If you're using a graphing calculator, let's get rid of that first. Using a graphing calculator, there's a little um, under math, if you hit math, you see the cubed root sign, and you also see that um, x to the x through, or whatever, <laughs> and through. You'd have to, again, plug that 3 in before. So if I wanted to use that, it would have had to say 3, and then, sorry, no, then the math key, and then I want, we'll just do it with 3. Even though there's a cubed root, I want to show you how to do it with that. And then the 5. And then we could have said negative 163. And we would have gotten the same thing. But I will just continue to use this lovely little machine. Okay, so we want to find the square root of negative 17. Well, if we put that in our graphing calculator, we're going to get an error. Remember, when you square root a negative number, you get an i. So it depends on the directions. If they say imaginary numbers are complex numbers, then you're going to have your i. And then you could just do the square root of 17 in here. So it's 4.12. And otherwise, if they don't, if they just say real numbers, then you'd say no solution. So it depends on what the directions are. Over here, we could put that in our calculator. We just we won't put the negative because it's outside, so we know it's going to be negative. But we're going to say 4 because that's our index. Then we're going to take, and we can just write in there, we can ex put it exactly like it says to. Radical. And we might need, well, let's see how that works. We might need another parenthesis. Um, 53.78. Just wanted to check to see if it did it correctly. Let's take 203 and cube it. And then we're going to take that answer. We're going to take take it to the one-fourth power, which you will learn later. This is just me checking to make sure we're getting the right answer, and we did. <laughs> I'll teach you that later. Okay, so that is how you use calculator to approximate radicals. Just got to know what your calculator can do. Cell phone calculators probably aren't the best to use on this. Um, get a calculator that has the x root and the cubed root, and it'll be much easier. Good luck. M squared, signing out.